Welcome to another episode of Task Mathematics. In today's mini lesson, we're going to identify whether an expression is rational or irrational. Let's begin. In our first expression, we have negative 3, 5 over 8 plus 3 over 7. In my previous mini lesson, the types of numbers, we saw that all types of fractions whether they are positive or negative, mixed fractions, proper fractions, or improper fractions, or all rational numbers. Therefore, negative 3, 5 over 8, which is a negative mixed fraction, is a rational number. And we're adding it to 3 over 7, which is a proper fraction, which is also a rational number. And if you add to rational numbers, your result is a rational number. Let's look at B. We have 9 over 5, which is an improper fraction. Therefore, it is a rational number. We're taking away the square root of 11. When it comes to square roots, I tell my students, ask yourself, can you take the square root of 11 in your head without the aid of a calculator? I cannot. I would need a calculator to get a estimate value for the square root of 11. Therefore, the square root of 11 is considered irrational. Now, if you want to further prove that it is irrational, you can use the calculator to evaluate. So second function, x squared, I'm going to enter 11. I want to press the right button and I hit enter. As you notice, the calculator gives me back square root of 11. Now, if you're on the task test and you're doing radicals and they want a simplified version or an answer that is a decimal, you will use this button right here, which has the left and the right. That is called a toggle. And if you press that, it converts the square root of 11 to a decimal. Now, this is not a terminating decimal. The calculator just stops at the number 9 because the display does not have enough space to show the rest of the values. So the square root of 11 is irrational. And when you have a rational and you're taking away an irrational, your result is irrational. Let's look at C. I have 2 thirds, which is a rational number. I'm taking away 3.1. 3.1 is a decimal. It is also a terminating decimal. So a terminating decimal is a rational number, and a rational taken away, and a, a rational, sorry, will give you a rational number. Getting a bit tongue-tied with rational and irrational. Let's look at D. D, we have pi. Remember, pi is irrational. And you're adding it to the square root of 8. So again, can you take the square root of 8 in your head? The answer is no. The square root of 8 is irrational. Now, when you add two irrationals, the result is irrational. Again, if you want to check on the square root of 8, Second function, x squared, 8. Go to the right. And when you hit enter, notice the calculator gives you 2 square root 2. So the radical is still there. It hasn't disappeared. Therefore, square root of 8 is irrational. Also, a little note. With your calculator, you do not have to clear it after every computation. Um, the calculator has enough room. The screen is pretty large. And that's why I like the TI30XS. And you can see all your calculations. And you use the up and the down button to go up to see previous calculations. And as you go, you're going to go down. So that's just a helpful tip. Let's look at E. E, we have negative 4. Negative 4 is an integer. All integers are rational numbers and you're multiplying it by the square root of 36, 
Now, the square root of 36, you can take that in your head. You could actually evaluate that in your head. Square root of 36 is 6. 6 is an integer, therefore negative 4 is an integer, and you're multiplying by square root of 36, which is actually 6, which is also an integer, so that's rational. And when you multiply a rational times a rational, the result is a rational number. Let's look at f. I have the square root of 3. Hmm, can't take the square root of 3 in my head, so that is irrational and I'm multiplying by the square root of 27 uh, I can't take the square root of 27 without the use of a calculator so that is irrational now this is where it gets a little bit interesting when you have an irrational multiplied by another irrational your answer could be irrational or rational so to figure out if the square root of 3 times the square root of 27 is a irrational number or a rational number, we're going to have to do some mathematics. So instead of having two radical signs, I'm going to have one radical sign. They want us to multiply, so I'm going to take 3 and multiply it with 27. 3 times 27 is 81. And I know the square root of 81 is 9. And I know that 9 is an integer, and all integers are rational numbers. So when I multiplied these two irrationals, the result was a rational number. If you want to use the calculator, we're going to go second function x squared, 3, we're going to go to the right, they want us to multiply, second function, x squared, 27, I'm going to go to the right, and then I hit enter, and the calculator spits out 9, and 9 is an integer, and all integers are rational numbers. So notice there is no radical sign being shown here. They just show you an integer, which is rational. So I showed you how to do it manually and how to input in the calculator, and both answers were nines. Let's try G. We have the square root of 6. I can't take the square root of 6 in my head, so that is irrational, times... I can't take the square root of 5 in my head, so that is also irrational. But you must remember, when you multiply two irrationals, your answer can be irrational or rational. So we're going to do the math. Again, instead of having two radical signs, I'm going to have just one. They want us to multiply, so 6 times 5, that will give me 30. So I have to take the square root of 30. No, I can't take the square root of 30 in my head. So that is my clue that my answer is irrational. So when I multiply these two irrational numbers, my answer is irrational. Suppose I am dividing. So I have the square root of 2. So I know that is irrational. And I'm dividing by the square root of 18. Hmm, I can't take the square root of that in my head. So I'm going to assume that it's irrational. And again, an irrational divided by an irrational is either irrational or rational. So division have similar properties to multiplication when it comes to two irrational numbers. So I'm going to try to simplify this. Instead of having two square roots, I'm going to have just one. So I have 2 as my numerator and 18 is my denominator. 2 and 18 can be simplified. I can divide both of these by 2, so I'm going to simplify it. So that's the square root of 1 over 9. 
I'm now going to take the square root separately. The square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 9 is 3. So the square root of 1 over 9 is actually a third, and a third is a fraction. And we know all fractions are rational numbers. So again, these two irrational numbers, when divided, produced a rational number. If we used our calculator, I'm going to clear my system because it's getting a bit full. So second function, oh, before I do that, let's clear that again. I'm going to press n over d because I have a fraction. Then I'm going to press second function x squared, x squared, and there's my square root at the numerator position. I'm going to input 2. I'm going to come down because I want to go to my denominator. I'm going to go second function x squared so I can have my radical or square root sign. I'm going to input 18. I'm going to go to the right, and I'm going to have to go to the right twice. So here I have square root 2 divided or fraction bar square root 18, and then I hit enter, and notice I get 1 over 3, and 1 over 3 is a fraction. All fractions are rational numbers. Here we have i. I have 0 0.125, which is a decimal. It is a terminating decimal, therefore it is rational. I'm taking away the square root of 17. I can't take the square root of 17 in my head, so I know that is irrational. And a rational take away an irrational is irrational. J. I have 0 0.25, which is a terminating decimal. All terminating decimals are rationals. I'm dividing by another decimal, but this decimal has a bar over the 3. Now that little bar tells you that this decimal has a repeating pattern. It goes 1.33333. You now if you have a decimal with a repeating pattern, it is rational. So a rational divided by a rational is rational. Last one, k. We have pi. We know pi is irrational. And I'm adding it to a half, which is a fraction. And all fractions are rationals. And an irrational plus a rational is and irrational. So in this lesson, we identified whether certain expressions are rational or irrationals. Now the one thing you have to remember is if you have a rational and you're adding or subtracting another rational, you would get a rational. If you have a rational and you're adding or subtracting an irrational, your result would be irrational. Now, if you have an irrational and you're adding or subtracting an irrational, your result is irrational. And this is for adding and subtracting. All of these are true. Rational plus rational gives a rational. Rational plus an irrational gives an irrational. An irrational plus an irrational gives an irrational. And the same goes for if you're subtracting. Now multiplication and division is a little bit different. So a rational times a rational will give you a rational. That is always true. A rational times an irrational will give you an irrational. That is always true. But you must remember that if you have an irrational multiplied by another irrational, your result is either irrational or 
rational. This is key, especially when you're multiplying. And this also goes for dividing. A rational divided by a rational gives a rational. A rational divided by an irrational will give an irrational. An irrational divided by an irrational will give you an irrational or rational. I know I didn't put the division sign here. I'm going to try to put it in so you have it. I kind of it kind of looks weird, but it's the best I can do so that you know. Because remember, multiplication and division are the opposites of each other. I hope this video has been helpful. I try to make these videos very simple so that anyone in any level of mathematics can understand the topic being taught. So have a great weekend. Enjoy your Labor Day. And subscribe. That's all I can say. Like and subscribe. And also, let me know if you like this black background. I'm going for the chalkboard look. As you can see, I am still kind of experimenting with different backgrounds and different um, ink colors. So all comments will be helpful. Again, thank you for watching my videos and also thank you to the new subscribers. I hope these videos are very helpful.